Yeah, it's a team game. Um, so Persona Three Reload, um, that is the basically next Persona, not mainline game. Um, so I, I think generally the phrase mainline is like the core series and the original version of the core series. So if I'm operating under that definition, Persona 3 Reload will be another spinoff. Uh, I believe the third or fourth spinoff since Persona 5 uh, debuted six years ago. Um, so Atlas has been getting it in. This is what I wanted because I felt like if you're going to move on to the future, we really need to end this era. I like to think that Persona 3 and 4 have an era, and then 5 is loosely connected to 3 and 4. Like, I, I, I do believe legitimately that, like, 3 and 4 are, like, twins, basically, sister and brother. Um, and they even have games that include the two, of course. And then 5 is, like, because threes sound better to us as people, we kind of made those that th- excuse me. I just put down some bubbly, shout out to bubbly, the fucking vitamin water. So I'm going through it right now. It's making me bubbly, but um, it, it made it into a, a triplet of sorts, which I really don't think it is. I think those two work together well because. Three, partially because of when it came out and the graphics, is so dark and grimy. And then four is so fucking stylized and glitzy and glamoury and and yellowy. Those two work so well. And then five is kind of like this mesh between the two premises. So I can see why people, I guess, like five feels like an in-between. Five is very dark tonally. But the colors really pop. But also, I mean, it came out in 2017. And the remaster came in 2020, and the graphics are just gorgeous in comparison to 3 or 4. Uh, all that being said, we have 3 Reload, which seeks to, I would imagine, still keep the very dark tones of Persona 3 story wise and um, content matter while making it uh, visually close to what we have now. I already looked through a good bit of this article. I just kind of had the idea of doing a reaction once I kind of looked through and saw some pretty big changes. And I just wanted to react to them, literally. Um, so I'm going to just scroll through here. This is pretty much the best uh, page for summarizing changes that I've seen to date. Maybe once the product is ready to come out, we get another article like this from, you know, maybe a reputable game site or even a Reddit that just compiles differences. Because, I mean, there's going to be a ton of differences that actually we don't notice until we get into the game itself. And people can kind of play around and know like Easter eggs and stuff like that. But for the most part, it seems like there's some pretty major ones that have already been discussed. So one thing to keep in mind, and I think this threw me off. I initially heard about this game. is that this remake is based off of the original P3, which nobody played. Uh, rather than fucking FES or Portable, which most people... Essentially, Portable is the one that has been passed around from console to console... Uh, since the uh, kind of opening of the borders from Atlas's personas to the rest of the video game market. So, Portable, the one that people know the most, obviously has a female character, which does not... I will just kind of spoil one thing. It does not happen, uh, and it says it right here. The female protagonist will not be in this thing, uh, the answer, I think, is exclusive to FES. Yeah. So I never got to play the answer. Uh, I hear it was worthwhile content, but I never got to play it because I never had FES, which is, I think, PS2 in of itself, maybe? Let me see. An episode of Persona 3, which teaches the end of the journey. I believe the journey is what Persona 3 actually ends up at, where, you know, the protagonist saves everybody and then dies. Um... I'm going to make sure to put, like, spoiler alert, I guess, in this, because hopefully you guys, like, play Persona 3 first. Uh, it's recommended to play the journey first. Furthermore, the content, the essence scenario is mainly combat-oriented and does not involve any daily life or daily life or social mechanisms. Um, 
And basically, yeah, it's kind of some bullshit. Um, <laughs> not particularly necessary by any means. But yeah, this is this is. And we the thing that was fucked up thing about it was that we thought it was going to keep up like the um, the gym or color, not not gym the the color tradition with P fives and its spinoff. So we just hope like P five red or P five crimson. And when you saw like P five R, which I think the trademark was P five R. That's how we find out about the stuff first. It's trademarks usually. Uh, people are saying P five red and ended up being P five royal. Uh, I believe it's P five the royal, but whatever. Um, so it will be able for launch on a Microsoft Game Pass subscription service. Dude, being an Xbox gamer is pretty fucking nice. I'm gonna be you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, P four or P four PS four PS five PS four. Oh shit. I'll get into the graphics later in this in this um this list. And yeah, no switch. I heard it was revealed that it was gonna be no switch. So here's some of the changes from the original P three. Again, not comprehensive, but a um I mean, we are at the point where, like, the game is pretty much finished development. If it's coming out in early 2024, uh, then more likely just about everything has been polished by this point, with it being August 2023. Um, yeah, I can't really... I don't know, like, the phases of game development, but, I mean, by this point, the, the product itself is pretty much be finished, especially the game aspects of the product, like, maybe some translations. Translating might still be, in like, happening right now. Getting it from, it's going to natively be Japanese, but getting it from Japanese to the English markets, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's the last step of the whole process, but I mean, I can't really think even that because, well, not not necessarily like like doing the subtitles is what I mean. Like the subtitles, the vocal work has probably already been done a long time ago, but the actual subtitles that you would put into the game, maybe that's being done right now. Not sure, but um, the actual core game is definitely done by now so the game aesthetics have been overhauled including character designs and sprites the gui map models and their contents specific additions include a mini map and objectives bar below the date and moon phase and npcs that fill the halls in gecko and uh high school so that's the advent of the mini map this is going to feel like it's pretty much necessary to have a mini map i'm not sure if p3 fes had anything like this because p3s yes was uh basically like more or less like it was um it was you could move in i guess like it's a open it's a hub right i don't know if it had a mini map i'm guessing that it didn't uh p4 golden did i think i'm pretty sure it did (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna look that up on my phone while I think about this. Uh, P5 obviously did. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be a necessary addition. They're gonna go open world, in which they obviously did. So uh, we're cool with that. Obviously, um, I think it's cool that they have an objectives bar because P5. Does P5 have an objectives bar? I don't know if it. If it, I'm trying to think on top of my head. But by the way, it's 5 a.m. I'm tired of shit right now. So I just. Just wanted to get that out the way. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if it had. I think it does. Oh yeah, because it's, it's the top right. Okay, I'm sorry, bro. I'm faded right now. That 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 type top right text and persona is the objectives bar, which is in P5, P5R, and even in P5S. So that's cool that they have that. I mean, I think that's a, a pretty big thing. Uh, it's gonna be below the moon phase, which is important because I think. Every time it was a full moon, that's when fuckery happened in P3, I want to say. Is that P4? I think it might have been P3 and P4. I don't know. Uh, and NPCs, yeah, I mean, got to have some people there, of course. People that you just walk right through. Uh, cell-shaded nobodies, basically. Uh, I have 50% left. We got to hurry the fuck up. Uh, so, newly arranged music. I didn't like this because I like some, like, kind of the... I like the... the, the um. So mainly the the song I'm thinking about in my head is the one I would play when you come back into the hotel at night. We like to go to that night and day by that little like rapidy Korean bullshit they got rap Korean bullshit. I like that song a lot, man. The only problem is that like P3 had like five fucking songs, 
And that shit got repetitive very goddamn quickly. There might have been different songs for the dungeons, but like the dungeons were so fucking boring. I didn't even like listening. I didn't even like think of the music. If that makes sense. So it's not like we're missing out on anything in particular. It's just I'm, I'm gonna miss that one song, the hotel song. The rest of the the, the songs in there, I don't even remember. It's just that one song is so infectious. You kind of have to remember it. Um, new new animated cutscenes, but some original scenes have been remade in 3D. Makes sense. I mean, it was something that's iconic. They're gonna just kind of you know keep that around. I can guarantee you, like the last scene where Aegis or Aegis, I don't know, how to, I forgot how to pronounce. Aegis like holds the protagonist while he, while he's dying. Like the very end of this the series or the very end of the game, I guarantee that comes back. I guarantee that shit. Uh, Japanese voices were recorded from scratch, so the distinction here is that the Japanese voices were recorded from scratch. However, the English version record or features an entirely new voice cast. So I'm taking it to mean that the Japanese voices are going to be the same as before, which I don't know what they sound like because they're listening in in dub, I guess, quote unquote. I'm not fucking like. Persona is one of those things where, like, I think even if I, like, followed it in sub, like, I'm not, like, reading and playing a fucking game. Like, I'm just gonna, like, be, I'm a big anime dude, but, like, I'm not gonna, like, play a sub fucking game. I'm just not doing that shit, bro. I'm not, I'm not doing, I need to hear that shit. And the dub is fucking good at Persona. Like, some of the voices kind of get a little bit weird because they get changed around and shit like that, depending on, like, the adaptation, but, like, when they're consistent, they're pretty good. The one thing I hated, like the worst dub voice I've ever heard from Persona was Chie Satanaka and uh, the original Persona voice actor for her. I actually liked the, the new one better. The old one sounds like a fucking, like, yo. Um, am I tripping? Anyway, let me just keep on going, dude. I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, English version dialogue is slightly changed. You guys are localized in 13 languages, only in subtitle form. Uh, the frame rate has been improved from 30 to a stable 60. And 4K support. Uh, I don't think it's going to get to 4K for most people. Because, you know, I don't know. I just don't feel like that's going to be the case. But, um, I don't know. To me, like, a stylization of this does not look as good as Persona 5 Royal. Like, it looks like, I mean, it's rebuilt from the ground. It's not like just a um, upscale like, yeah, it's not just upscaled or, you know, whatever for Persona 3. It's like a rebuilt game. So it's not like it's, it it should be just as good looking as Persona 5 World. And it says the scale is set to match. But I feel like Persona 5 World, like, looks better than, than Persona 3. Maybe I just like Persona 5 World's, like, art style better. I don't know. Uh, new side stories have been added for certain characters, separate from the circle mechanic. Something that we had in Persona Five uh, World to some degree. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'd say, say, say stories. We had like uh, quest, basically, and uh, activities, and uh, jazz mechanics and stuff like that. Maybe not stories per se, but they're, they're definitely side events. Uh, class questions have been changed. Uh, SLs can no longer be broken, and criteria for reversing them have been mellowed. So, I only had this happen once when I played, to my memory, when I played Persona 3 Portable. Um, I had, I think, one relationship that got broken. And I don't remember how that happened. But it was, it was a, a romantic one that I think got broken. I don't know if it's because I like did another relationship or what, but um, there were actually like penalties for social links in that game. I didn't know to what extent until like just recently, but no other Persona game after has I think I don't think P four G has penalties for I know it has penalties for multiple relationships I've did multiple relationships but I don't think it has penalties for like fucking up answers or um, one one thing that I think you can have in P three is that if you don't talk to somebody for a while you can have a regression or social link I think that's the thing that's in P three original. Uh, Tartars has a new map and significantly more details and parts. Uh, has breakable objects. So basically, like, P5 adjacent, I guess. Uh, keep in mind, P3 was importable, a fucking top-down, like, just side-scroller. Um, I even side-scroller, like, they fucking, like, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but, um, 
P3 in PlayStation 2. I'm not sure. I mean, it was it was a hub game, um, like sandbox game. So I'm not sure how that looked like there. I'd imagine it's actually kind of open world. You can move around in it. But um, as for anything with P3 portable, it was just a fucking screen you clicked on, basically. Uh, the p- protagonist can dash while this point. Wait, wait you, you can move around in P3's uh, P3 port because you had the the protagonist and you could pull it behind dudes and then hit them with the fucking the stick. See, you could move around in the It's just the design was so fucking pedantic and and um, persistently boring that maybe that's what throwing me off. But yeah, you could move around in P3's done. Listen, dude, I'm fucking slumped, dude. This I hope this is entertaining to somebody, because I'm fucking tired, bro. Uh, the protagonist can dash while exploring dungeons. The condition system where party members can be, become tired over times we're removed. Um, I think that might be something that really pisses people off. Because these are, like, stylized choices, right? Like, these are things that you do to make, to give more of a challenge. And P3 is more of a challenge in my opinion, than the other P's going forward. Mainly, mainly because of the simple fact that, like, P3 is less, has less quality of life updates. Makes sense, obviously. But shit like having to battle a tiring system adds a little bit of flair that, like, there's not a replacement for that in the succeeding games. Um, in the succeeding games, there's no, like, um, status effect that prevents you from going to... And really, what, what what being tired does is it doesn't prevent you from going to dungeons. It just makes your performance worse. Like, as I recall, if you were, like, sick, which is a status, if you were sick, you would take more damage, deal less damage. I think you could fix it by... Going to the bathroom, looking in the mirror. I think you also could take like medicine or something like that that could get you right. And it would be like an it would be an inherent like kind of nudge to get sleep. Because if you got sleep, it would improve your condition. There's like basically sleeping is almost invalidated activity in P4 and especially P5 and especially P5 Royal. There's, like, no reason to ever sleep in those games. Unless you, like, just were, like, in the end game. You had nothing else to do. But even then, like, with P5 World, just theoretically, like, you used to always have something to do every night. I mean, there's some activities. There's trophies. There's just no reason to ever sleep in those games. So, the, kind of the, the condition system kind of made it to where, like, you had a real reason to have that mechanism. As it is now, you would just like remove sleeping as an activity, as a possible activity in this game, outside of like needing to progress the story in um in locked circumstances. And you'd probably be straight, honestly. Uh, there's a point where if you you know if you've unlocked this, I forgot what social link it was. I think it was Kawakami's. But basically, you can have it where, like, you don't really need to abide by the, um, you're, you went to the, you went to the dungeons today, so you have to, like, go to sleep shit. We have to, like, at least stay in the crib, you know, shit. Like, that, that becomes invalidated by Kawakami Social Link and P5 Royal, which, that, I don't think that is just the previous to that game. Like, that's, like, a brand new addition to that entire series, is the ability to just, like, kind of circumvent the uh, quote-unquote fatigue factor of palaces or dungeons or whatever Tartarus. But even then, like, even if you stay in the crib, you can usually find something to do in the crib in the previous games. Sleeping just isn't valid. It just doesn't matter. It's good you can dash, though. You can dash. Um, they have different victory poses, like P5, and it's kind of... Kind of like the, um, after somebody gets a kill, and then, like, it flashes to the character before uh, showing SP and stuff like that. Uh, protagonist can give direct orders to his allies. I believe that was something that could be done in Persona 3, uh, portable, but not in P3 FES. 
Some shield properties have been changed, and the learn pools of party members have been rebalanced. I'm guessing this refers to experience? I guess. Like, kind of how, uh, how SP is generated or distributed? I guess. Uh, that's all I can think about. Um, research of this game started in 2019 and started actual development late the same year. So basically in 2019, they were finalizing, I mean, by late 2019, P4 or P5 were was pretty much like a finalized product, but they were releasing P5R. They had worked on Strikers, I think, around the same general time, like, I don't know, at the same time, I think in the same, like, cycle, but a different studio than, um, than who worked on P3 or P5R. So P5, S P5 are ready to go. They have P5 Tactica, which is out now. Um, and they have been actively working on P6 for a while. So, yeah, Atlas has been going crazy with games, too. You got to really, like, pat them on the back. They've been keeping shit fucking just galvanized out there. Uh, so they went to play on the Simmer Sales P5. Yep, yep, yep. Reload, transfer the abbreviation R, some of the P5 world, the definitive edition of the game. It also implies the re- re- meaning of a remake, but P3 remake was not chosen. It wasn't interesting. <laughs> uh, Reload specifically chose as RE and commonly used in games, but the master sticks to the Persona series. Reload was also picked due to a vocal having for by Gun. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. As the main story based their roles around an ensemble drama. That looks so fucking beautiful, dude. Aegis. Um, the graphics. The colors just feel very uh, P3-ish. Let me make sure the colors still feel very P3-ish. The font feels like P3-ish. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's continue going through here. Uh, the models. The models look pretty much equal, more or less. Like the mo- and the models is in like the uh, the kind of dialogue uh, characters. Looks pretty similar, I would say. In terms of this, like the, the I don't know, man. Am I am I off? Like this actual world does not feel comparable. I won't say not comparable, but it feels a little bit like lesser than than Persona Five or. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's just they're trying to make it look similar to what you would expect out of P3 and not. And this looks good, though. This, like, this looks really good. It just looks good in like a. I don't know. It looks good in a different way. It's a different art direction in P5. I think that's what it really is. I think I'm just more privy to P5's art direction than this. But this looks good. Like, this is very defined. Like, Individual bricks, uh, the way the fucking shading looks like on the font, um, like the model look, the model plays well. I mean, like the models for the NPCs looks decent. I mean, it, it's not bad looking at all whatsoever. I, I mean, I feel like the HUD is definitely like not as good as the HUD for P5R, and then the f- I could see where somebody would like not be a fan of the like. The font stylization for the weekend, like I, this, looks a little bit, a little bit quirky. I will say a little bit quirky. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's just different. It's not bad. It's just different. I, I think P five OG is or Royal is so fucking cutting edge in terms of like how it looks, dude. So I, mean, I don't know, man. It, it looks amazing. Uh, the largest amount of voice lines in the Persona series. Um, and it's the first time the game to be re re me re fucking radio moment. This is the first time the game to be re made for soda. Fucking dude, I'm like faded right now, bro. I'm cooked, dude. Um, and this is what I want to end on here, right here. So Persona Three will never have the definitive version that sucks. This is my interpretation. I realized like the female character was not going to be part of this. Or the answer. It's basically the pro- prevalent reason to play out of those two games outside of like them being uh, updates onto the original series or the original game is that they had different paths, basically different offerings. Um, if you play P5 
royal. You're getting everything that you would get out of P5 OG. There's nothing that's really lost in that transition. Nothing of consequence, really. Uh, Persona 4 Golden improves off Persona 4. So, Persona 3 um, has two different paths that resist to this point. Two different reasons to own two different, entirely different Persona games. And now we have a third game that will also, I mean, this will be the definitive edition if you only played the original Persona 3, which, like I said, that's not the case for the majority of people. The majority of people have experienced Persona 3 in a way that is different than either of those games. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maki Man of Love Features added in Persona 3 FES and Persona 3 Portable. Um, makes you realize they were never truly the definitive version of Persona 3, and that sucks. Uh, ostensibly the fourth version of Persona 3. Yeah, the, the original was gone. Um, instead, it uploaded to the story, uploaded to the story as a story playthrough. Uh, great moments. And then Portable. This is the one that's been ported to basically all platforms. Doesn't have the answer, but allows you to play as the female protagonist. And uh, she is also playable in one of the uh, little. I forgot. I don't even know the cues are. All right. So the other AirPod died as well, which I expected to happen. Pretty fucking. You hear that sound? That's pretty fucking crazy. Um, I expected that to happen pretty soon. So no AirPods. Um. This is a bunch of other differences, but their point is that no matter which version of Persona 3 you chose to play, you'd be missing out on features that only exist in the other one. And... Unfortunately... That's going to be the case. There's not going to be a P3RR. -R. Unfortunately, man. That is the unfortunate case. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's tough because, like, no other P offers a female protagonist. So that makes P3P one, it's like, it's one of a kind, is really, it's so individualized in of itself. And, um, you know, I mean, it's going to be a certain subset of people that, uh, there's a lot of people that are, of, I don't want to say like marginalized groups, but basically marginalized groups that really identify with having a female protagonist. There's not too many JRPGs of this ilk that are very anime-esque, which I mean, I know Japanese role-playing game, anime, you know, but like, for some three, it's like playing a fucking anime, like those types of JRPGs. There's not too many like, like, that really give you the woman perspective. So I understand why so many people really like that. And again, it's one of a kind. There's no other P. I played P4, I played P4OG, I played P5, I played P5R, I played P5S. I'm not gonna play P1 or P2, I refuse it. Um, maybe they have female protagonists, I don't know. But they don't count. I'm saying fucking <laughs> they just don't. No one thinks about those two games, dude. They're like the fucking ugly stepchildren, I'm sorry. Um, this one just fucking was the modern persona that had a few protagonists, and people like that shit. Dude. No, it's not. That's not happening. There's not. They're not remaking a fucking remake. That's not. This is it. This is the end game, brother. Um, they might do a. If they do, you know, I will say right now, they do a version for Switch that has the female protagonist. That's going to be fucking bonkers. Because I, I tell you right now, it's going to be a lot of people that get pissed if that happens. There's going to be a lot of people that get fucking livid if that happens. That they bought an inferior version. Because they're going to think of it as inferior. Like it's going to be like, we'll trade a female protagonist for like fucking way better graphics in every kind of possible capacity and better performance. Uh, a lot of people would honestly make that trade in a heartbeat for the, to get the, the Switch version. A lot of people would do that. A lot. A lot of Persona fans would do that. I'm just telling you right now. A lot of Persona fans would rather have the female protagonist than have 
um, stable 60 FPS and 40K or 4K fucking uh, display. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not sure they would take, like, whatever the fuck the Switch looks like. I'm sure the Switch is, like, fucking, like, 720 or some shit, like, 320. I don't, I don't fucking <laughs> I don't know. But, like, they would treat that in a heartbeat, dude. Um, so, yeah. This is what, this is, like, what I opened up with. So I'm going to end here. Uh, Persona is in an interesting spot right now. Despite the glut of ports, remakes, and spinoffs, it feels like we're nearing the end of this chapter for the series. We have Persona 5 Tactica coming in November, Reload in 2024, and the mobile Persona 5 The Phantom Minutes, which will probably be making its way to the West at some point. But these feel like the end of an era, a kind of holding pattern before the franchise's next evolution. We know that the core leadership between the P3 to P5 trilogy from a new team inside of Atlas years ago is called Studio Zero and Metaphor Re Fantasio is their first project. This includes director Katsura Hashino, character designer Shigenori Sojima, and composer Shoji Meguro. Though Persona 6 has not been announced yet, it's undoubtedly been in development for quite some time. And with new blood making up its leadership, it'll be fascinating to see if it feels like another gradual evolution of familiar formula, or a complete redesign similar to how a new mainline Final Fantasy game feels completely different from what came before it. I bet you guys all I couldn't fucking read for shit. I can. I don't need a stutter to read. I just choose to be able to fucking read without stuttering. Anyway, that's basically what I kind of opened up when I'm going to end it on there. Uh, this could definitely be a thing where you could perceive it as a trilogy. And if you're telling me that they've had the same team generally working on P4 and 5 they had on P3, then I guess it is a trilogy in a sense. Either way, like I said, I think this is an era that's about to end with these last few like kind of drips of the Persona 5 uh, IP and closing out P3 and P4 by getting them onto modern platforms. I think they've done all they need to do at this point. They've given us more than what we asked for when we kind of had this whole uh, adventure that we embarked on since really Persona 4 Golden. Uh, this feels like a, a 11, 12 year, um, almost Marvel phase esque. Well, I guess it'd be more of a Marvel saga esque, like time executed. They did their thing. Uh, we got good games. We got great graphics, and the Western market has gotten a um, an entry into JRPGs that has not existed previously. Uh, outside of the Final Fantasy lines, which are more fighting games and things of that ilk, we have never gotten this type of more novel-esque anime games to see the way it has in the, the Daganropa or Daganropa of the world. Um, this was the first of that type of game to succeed in this market. I'm glad that they did because we need more weeb-ass shit in America, of course. That's it for me, 35 plus minutes later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, see you later.